The Clone Wars were one of the largest conflicts in galactic history, fought across battle lines drawn haphazardly across the entire galaxy. Any point in the war, hundreds of battles were being fought on worlds scattered across galactic civilization, from the remote reaches of the Outer Rim to the core worlds themselves. The Clone Wars are quite confusing if you try to look at them as a whole, but there was rhyme and reason to how they were fought. In this video, we'll be taking a wider look at the conflict in a bid to make sense of the war and the theatres in which it played out. Attention, Sergeant on deck! Firstly, we cannot stress how utterly massive the Clone Wars were. At its peak, the Galactic Republic controlled 3 million worlds and plenty of these defected to join the Confederacy of Independent Systems. And those worlds that seceded weren't all in the same place either. The CIS consisted of more than a dozen enclaves of space spread across the remnants of the Republic, resulting in a nasty case of border gore. Battles happened simultaneously in the hundreds. It wasn't just clones and droids fighting either. Local planetary security forces were involved on both sides, with there having been many battles fought just between them, without a clone or a droid in sight. The Clone Wars was less one big conflict than it was thousands of small civil wars taking place across the galaxy, with the clone and droid armies intervening where they saw fit. That perhaps is why they're called the Clone Wars instead of the Clone War. The Republic attempted to bring some degree of order to this haphazardness with its sector army system, which divided all of known space, including neutral or separatist systems, between 20 sector armies, each of which had a capital world, a commanding MOF, and its own dedicated set of resources at its disposal. They grouped the galaxy into three regions between them. The first through the sixth sector armies guarded the core while the 7th through the 12th Sector Armies waged war in the northern half of the Rim and Sector Armies 13 through to 20 managed the southern half. By the Outer Rim sieges, which were the last six months of the Clone Wars, the Confederacy of Independent Systems had been mostly driven from the core and greatly decreased in size. There were six large enclaves of separatist space left and Republic High Command designated each of them a theater of the Outer Rim sieges. In total, there was the Mygido Theatre, the Sereno Theatre, the Felucia Theatre, the Siskine Theatre, the Yagdul Theatre, and the Presitlan Theatre. These theatres don't just apply to the Outer Rim sieges, however. They correlate with how the Clone Wars had been waged from the very beginning. So, with that out of the way, we're going to be looking at the Clone Wars through these six theatres, and we'll add in a seventh theatre for the other, smaller pockets of separatist space scattered throughout the galaxy, mostly in the core. Let's start by talking about those miscellaneous worlds. Outside of the six theatres which were based around larger patches of separatist space, there are a bunch of small enclave worlds scattered across the Republic. Of them, Scipio, Skako, Nemoidia, Cato Nemoidia, Castel, Colophore, and Null all came with small clusters of dependent separatist systems around them, while others like Forost, Argal, Rendili, and Fondor were just isolated separatist systems in Republic sectors. The Republic started the Clone Wars by effectively blockading these pockets of space, setting fleets in place along all hyperlanes leading to and from them in the hope that they would just wither out and die. Later in the war, as part of a counterattack in the wake of several separatist incursions into the core, the Republic invaded and cleaned out most of these systems. These isolated pockets of space were the primary concern for most of the core sector armies. The first sector army, which was tasked with protecting Coruscant, Anaxis, and the heart of the Republic, had to deal with Scipio, Foros, and the Skako Enclave, all of which were captured in various campaigns in 20 BBY. The second sector army, which protected the area around Corellia and Duro, had to contain trade federation armies housed in the Nemoidian purse worlds, which fell during the last months of the war. The third sector army had to manage Castell and its commerce guild allies, as well as the vicious Colicoid worlds, while the fourth sector army dealt with Nemoidia and Balmora, as well as part of the Felucia Theatre. The fifth and sixth armies, which were based in the deep core in the fringes of the unknown regions, respectively, had no separatist space within their territory, and shipped nearly all of their assets off to other theatres. 
Though there were plenty of battles in the Corps during the Clone Wars, especially with Separatist incursions like Operation Dirge's Lance and the Bulwark Fleet Rampage, the Corps theatre was nonetheless comparatively quiet, with arms races and standoffs being more common than actual battles. As a result, the six sector armies based in the region were largely considered reserve armies, which had most of their assets shipped off to other theatres. Now onto the more orderly theatres. Some of the hardest fighting of the Clone Wars took place in the Mygito Theatre, a chunk of sectors in the northern outer rim that, in later years, would end up becoming the core territory of the Imperial Remnant. This swath of space, which contained Munilins, Mygito, Kali, Garki, and Dantooine, was largely affiliated with the intergalactic banking clan, which maintained massive fleets of warships in the region. The Republic's 7th and 8th sector armies waged a back and forth war against the Confederacy in this region, mostly along the Entrala route between Munilinst and Ord Mantell. The war in this theatre was an endless nightmare of stalemates and mass casualties, to the point where it took the full efforts of the Galactic Marines to crack the region open during the Outer Rim sieges. The Republic actually made progress here earlier in the first few months of the war, taking Entrala and then Munilinst itself in the largest battle of the war up to that point, but their progress stopped there for most of the conflict. After the fall of Munilinst, IGBC leadership set up shop on Mygido, which was much more heavily fortified and resisted Republic conquest for over two years, becoming the longest battle of the war. For nearly the entire conflict after Munilinst, the only successful Republic operations in this region were surgical strikes, which usually came with little to no territorial gain. The Republic made little progress in the Mygido Theatre until the very last days of the war. Near the Mygido Theatre was actually the least active theatre of the entire Clone Wars, the Sereno Theatre. Originally, this theatre was part of the same enclave of the Confederacy as the Mygido Theatre, a long stretch of space between Munilinst and Yavin that turned basically the whole northern border of the Republic into a battlefront, which the 9th and 10th sector armies were tasked with handling. Early in the war, this battlefront was mostly stagnant, as Separatist forces in the two theatres could reinforce each other easily thanks to a robust network of supply lines between them. Early Republic activities in the Sereno Theatre, like the Battle of Agama, were aimed at breaking these supply lines, though they were frequently met with failure. The Republic did have a breakthrough shortly after Operation Dirge's Lance, however, and by the time of the Outer Rim sieges, they were able to break these supply lines entirely, pushing the borders of the Sereno Theatre back to the Hidian Way in a swift and fairly unremarkable campaign. The Outer Hidian region, which stretched from the corporate sector down to Dathomir, was the core of the Sereno Theatre. Its strongholds were mostly political firebrands like Selenon and Sereno itself. There weren't many remarkable battles here, even during the Outer Rim sieges. By far the bloodiest theatre of the Clone Wars was the Felucia Theatre, which was based around the largest and most notable enclave of the Confederacy. At its largest, it edged into the expansion region, with worlds like Umbara, Onderon, and Mimbam forming its coreward bastions. The heart of this region was called the Foundry of the Confederacy, the industrial core of the CIS, which, among other crucial separatist worlds, contained Medalorn, Felucia, Seleucami, Jabim, Aigo, Mercana, Bospidi, and Raxus Secundus, the Confederacy's capital. The Techno Union, Commerce Guild, and Corporate Alliance all based large swaths of their armies here, and the frequent Republic incursions into this region usually resulted in bloody defeats. On the northern side of the Felucia Theatre, the 11th Sector Army served primarily to keep Separatist forces there from linking up with those in the Sereno Theatre, while the 12th Army had the unenviable task of advancing from its capital at Lantiles into the foundry of the Confederacy. For much of the war, this task saw repeated defeats, with Republic forces being driven out of the Tion Cluster early in the war and repeated attempts to take Felucia always ending in disaster. But in the Outer Rim sieges, after months of hard fighting, the Republic finally began to gain crown in the Felucia Theatre, slowly wearing down the foundry of the Confederacy, albeit at a massive cost in clone lives. The Siskine Theatre was one of the Clone Wars' most active theatres, and the fronts were constantly shifting here, as both the Republic and Confederacy had successful campaigns of conquest in the region. 
Separatist forces in this theater were grouped around the outer Karelian run, including one larger enclave around Ando and a bunch of scattered separatist worlds out in the cloak of the Sith, which included Geonosis, Hypori, and of course, Siskine. The 13th, 14th, and 16th sector armies saw plenty of action here, as did famous commanders like Anakin Skywalker and General Grievous. Many battles were fought in the Siskine Theatre in the early months of the war, including both Battles of Geonosis, the Battle of Hypori, the repeated attacks on Kamino, the Battle of Christosis, the Battle of Foline, the Battle of Bothawi, and the Battle of Ryloth. Both sides had highly successful campaigns here in the first half of the war, but the Republic ended up benefiting more from them as they had succeeded in taking the Confederacy's Karelian run enclave entirely by the start of the Outer Rim sieges, including Ando. In the later half of the war, the Republic campaigns in this region were mostly concerned with rooting out remote separatist strongholds and the tattered remnants of the region's fleets. The Prey Sitlin Theatre, which was located around the southern end of the Rumor Trade Route and the Hidian Way, was home to the chief shipyards of the Confederacy, with Salas, Luis, Van, Zagobar, Tibrin, and Anarch all having been located within the borders of the Separatist Enclave here. But the Republic had its own bastions in the region too. Eriadu, the home of Wilhof Tarkin, was also located in this theatre, and it coordinated nearly all Republic efforts here for most of the war. Uriadu's 18th Sector Army and the nearby 15th Sector Army were tasked with running the war here, which for much of the conflict involved defending Uriadu from repeated attacks from Celeste. There were a number of important battles in the Preisitlan Theatre, including the Battle of Preisitlan itself, the Battle of Tabrin, several battles of Celeste, the Battle of Zagobar, and at the end of the war, the Battle of Utapau. The Republic mostly fought a defensive war in this region, however, and this was due to the vulnerability of Ariadu and the strength of Separatist forces in the region. Even when the Outer Rim sieges began and the tides finally turned in the Preisitlan Theatre, the Republic made maddeningly little progress, which is why the Confederacy rallied that region at Utapau and Mustafa in the last days of the war. The final theatre of the Clone Wars was the Yagdul Theatre, located Corwood along the Rimmer trade route from the Preisitlan Theatre. Originally, those two theatres were based around one large chunk of separatist space on the Rimmer, though by the Outer Rim sieges, this enclave had been split in half. The Republic dedicated the 17th, 19th and 20th sector armies to the Yagdul Theatre, where they were met with extremely heavy opposition. The Confederacy's best fleets, commanded by General Grievous himself, were also based in this theatre. Some of Grievous's most well-known campaigns were launched in the Yagdul Theatre, including the Malevolence's Maiden Rampage, Operation Dirge's Lance, his conquest of the Outer Karelian Trade Spine, and even the Battle of Coruscant itself. The Republic had little luck with their incursions into the heart of Separatist space in this region, even during the Outer Rim sieges. This changed abruptly during the war's final days, as Grievous stripped the whole theatre of Separatist assets for his attack on Coruscant which allowed the Republic to sweep in and retake nearly all of the region in a matter of days after the end of the battle. So, that was our dissection of the theatres of the Clone Wars. And I want to know your thoughts. Are there any specific campaigns or theatres here that you'd like to see us discuss in further detail? There's still a ton more to be said about each theatre, so if you're interested, be sure to post your thoughts in the comment section below and give this video a like. Anyways guys, as per usual, just before you go, make sure you check out all those links in the description below, including our discords, our Geatsleys gaming network, and our Patreon. Anyways guys, as always, thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video.